Good afternoon. My name's Sal. I'm with the West Texas Regional Poison Center in El Paso, Texas. We deal with poison at the, at the poison center. We have household poison. We have uh, plant poison. We have uh, medicine, which is anything makes your body sick is a poison. Uh, but then we have animal poison. The venomous invertebrate and reptiles of the Chihuahua Desert. Mind you, we are a very high, high desert. We're a very wet desert. Consequently, we don't have as many animals as the Sonoran or Mojave or the Great Basin. We have so much water, uh, our temperatures are relatively cooler, so we actually don't enjoy uh, 16 rattlesnakes, we only enjoy five. Our scorpions are not that dangerous, so here's the point. What we're saying here, we're from El Paso, Texas, we're in the middle of the Chihuahua Desert, pertains only to the Chihuahua Desert. When I tell you that a snake has a round eye and a pointed tail cannot be venomous, that's very, very true in the Chihuahua Desert because the most venomous snake in America, the corals, elephants from Sonoran Desert, have a round eye and or a pointed tail. So keep that in mind as we go along. Now, this presentation has to do with bugs, inverts, uh, arachnids, animals that we have in our desert. You're typically going to find these in your houses. These guys are nothing but part of the ecological ladder that has to be followed that has to do with the plant. The plant decides what animals follow. That's the way you've been taught that since the third grade. This, this guy here started the planet one and a half billion years ago through photosynthesis. Uh, we were able to get a biotic planet and consequently through time some of these animals were able to help the plant. This plant turns out to have to have insects. Uh, the bees pollinate it, uh, so on and so forth, but insects also eat the plant. So along the way, the plant found ways to have animals adapt that can help it control the insect. So these animals here are nothing but the plant's way of controlling the insects that would otherwise uh, end the plant. So keep that in mind. Uh, you have a lot of control wherever you're at as to what kind of animals you have. Once you control the plant, the plant will control the animal. This is just the way it has to work. Since the plants are so different, so are the insects. Well, when the insects turn different, well, so do the animals that control them. We're gonna start with this first animal. This first animal is one of our local tarantulas. These animals are very, very gentle giants. Uh, typically, females can live 20 to 30 years. Uh, there's only one thing a tarantula wants when it goes over the wall of your backyard. She is looking for food. And if it's a he, he is looking for her. And that's just the way it works. Uh, typically, they're very, very docile, uh, long-lived. You pretty well leave these guys alone. They will leave you alone. Um, I like to say that they can't hurt you if they're walking. Once you make them stop, they, you've seen it before where they pick up their front feet and they bear their fangs. Well, they're not actually trying to use their fangs against you. This animal has a better way of defending itself. It has a special hair in the abdomen called urticating hair. They pick it up with these two front feet. They coil their body. When you get close enough, they sling the hair. Only they can tell how far they can throw that hair, and they will judge that as to whatever's bothering them. Aside from that, urticating hair, these animals are harmless. Leave them alone. It's cockroaches they're after. As far as I'm concerned, let them have all the cockroaches they want. They're not going to bother you. For whatever reason, Grandma has passed on this fear of spiders. This idea that spiders bite people, that spiders are dangerous. As a matter of fact, 
North America, Mexico, Canada, and the United States probably don't have over something like 4,000 kinds of spiders. Texas alone has uh, close to 1,000. These animals are nearly everywhere. I myself, I don't care where I'm at or yourself, wherever you're at watching this, are within three or four foot of a spider. An entomologist will tell you that. Ask any college professor, entomologist, ask him that question. He'll tell you. You probably never will be over four foot away from a spider. They're everywhere they need to be, and guess what? They haven't bothered you, because they can't. It's physically impossible for spiders to envenomate mammals. It just can't happen. By some quirk in nature, we have two that can. Just because of that, what we're going to talk about now is what I think is the big mistake of killing all spiders. One of the reasons that we're against that is simply because these animals are very prolific. This lady here, the Black Widow, probably puts out maybe between four and 500 babies every six months. These animals leave the mother after uh, two instars, and they literally, it's called ballooning, fly away. When she flies away on a strand of spider web, these babies don't know where they're going. As long as you have not interfered with what nature already has in place in your house, where you work, where you go to school, wherever you're at, if you don't interfere, nature has a wonderful way of taking care of this flying thing. All 500 of these babies are going to end up wherever the temperature and the wind takes them. Now, we have sheet web spiders, uh, the wolf. We have orb web spiders, um, the daddy long legs. This particular spider never climbs. It stays on the ground. This particular spider, the daddy long legs, will never come down. They have a niche that they're filling, and it's working very, very well. When this baby widow ends up, depending on the temperature, either on the ground or up on your ceiling, these spiders are taking care of them. We have a spider here that is very secretive uh, by, by, by its name, the brown recluse. The brown recluse is a spider that doesn't travel far. If you pay attention to what you bring inside, these, these animals don't want anything to do with your house. When they get in there, it's because usually somebody carried them inside. You pay attention, you will have no problem with these. Now, the signs of an envenomation is very simple. A bruise, this is a hemotoxic envenomation. A bruise that develops a blister. Nothing else does that. A bruise that develops a blister. This takes a couple of days. It doesn't hurt. If this is behind a child's back, he'll never know it. And consequently, you'll get an infection on that blister. So when you see a blister, well, that's not a big deal. When you see a bruise, that's not a big, these kids play with ball all day long and they get blisters. But when you see the combination, it is the brown recluse. Deal with it. The widow's completely different, they're neurotoxic. Sometimes you know you've been bit, sometimes you don't. Regardless, these animals, after a couple of hours, will let you know that you've been bit. Very, very, if there's anything gonna, that I can impress on you, to be careful with widows is how painful. I work in a hospital, and I, I work with doctors. We do continuing education, and I've heard about how painful this bite is. Think about that. This animal doesn't walk. This animal has never been seen on your wall, has never been seen on your kitchen table. You're not gonna find the brown recluse on the bathtub. These animals are cobweb spiders. They tend to stay in their nest. They do not roam. They do not go out looking for something to eat every night. It's not gonna climb your bed and bite you. The way you get bit by the black widow is when you put your hand on it. She's not going to run from here to here to bite you when you put your hand, so keep that in mind. They live their lives upside down underneath something where you can't see it. Not on the walls, not on the ceilings, not on the floor. It's underneath something. When you're reaching for stuff in your garage, wherever you're at, 
you're into the storeroom there at work, you look, number one, for the cobweb. Number two, think about where you're putting your hands because that animal is very, very painful and also very, very dangerous. As long as you do not interfere, these other spiders will do a good job of keeping them in check.